Well, now we continue our look at children's books and how their message relates to the Bible and its messages. And today we're going to look at a book that you probably don't know. In fact, I had never heard of it until Janet Schultz over there handed this to me. And it had a little note inside. And the note begins, Stories from Everywhere was copyrighted in 1949. I was born in bleep, and this book has always been in my life. I've carried it everywhere. Janet had circled one story in particular, One Day with Manu by Armstrong Sperry. Manu is an, 18, is an eight-year-old boy who lived in the tropical Polynesian island of Bora Bora. As a girl, Janet was enthralled because Bora Bora is a place so unlike Minnesota, unlike today. And one thing that really caught her attention, though, was the way that they treated names there. Let me read from it. The boy's real name was not Manu. In Bora Bora, a boy has two names. One is the name everyone calls the boy, the other is a name that only the boy's father and mother know. People of Bora Bora believe that there are spirits who try with all their might to find out a boy's real name. Once the spirit knows the name, they can hurt the boy. Manu's father and mother did not want that to happen, so not even Manu himself knew his real name. He might have told it to his little brother Timmy, but Timmy was only about six years old. He never could have kept the spirits from finding out about it. So the spirits in the South Seas never found out Manu's real name. Can you imagine never knowing your real name? Can you imagine being so afraid of evil spirits that not even your name is safe? Now this is Halloween week, and there will be lots of scary things around. There will be haunted houses and, and uh, scary costumes and creepy movies and all sorts of things that, that will scare us. And for some reason, people like to be scared. But of course, all those things are not real scares. I mean, when that zombie shows up at your door on Tuesday night, you're not afraid of really having your brains eaten. You know, it's just, we know that it's just a, a kid having fun. No one expects anything real on Halloween. We don't even really expect ghosts or demons or evil spirits to show up. But maybe we should. When the Bible talks about the forces of evil, it's not just talking about evil people or even evil systems of oppression. It's talking about spiritual forces too. The kind that Manu's family were afraid of. In Ephesians 6, we hear this. Put on all of God's armor so you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. You probably don't think much about mighty powers in this dark world or evil spirits in heavenly places, but, but they're fighting against you and want nothing more than to pull you away from God. And that's why whenever somebody is baptized in this church or confirmed, they or their parents are asked, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? You know, I've asked that probably a thousand times. And I've heard missionaries who have fought real battles, real spiritual battles with evil spirits. But I have to admit that, that I never really gave much thought to spiritual forces of evil. An experience 20 years ago changed that for me. I was working one evening in my office when I began to, to get hot and sweaty, 
a weight fell upon me and my chest began to hurt. I felt like I was being crushed. I told Tammy I need to go to ER. And if you've ever gone with those kinds of symptoms, you know that they don't mess around. Um, and so quickly I was run through all sorts of tests to determine whether or not I was having a heart attack. But I wasn't. There was nothing physically wrong with me. Uh, you might say then that it was a panic attack, but I was under uh, no undue stress. There was nothing I was really worried about. Life was pretty good. There's no reason I should have a panic attack. And a few hours later, all the symptoms disappeared, and I was good as new and went back home. But I was puzzled. What was that about? The next day, someone asked me, did you know that there was a coven of witches casting spells and calling down curses on you last night? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah. They don't like the work that this church is doing in the name of Jesus, and so they're trying to harm you. Are you okay? Well, that was a really bizarre conversation. And I didn't ask them how they knew I was being cursed, uh, but I hadn't talked with them about what had happened to me the night before. So was I experiencing the effects of, of people trying to do evil, calling on evil forces? Maybe. But I was unharmed. In fact, it actually turned out for the good because I had the best physical that I'd had in, in ages. <laughs> Gave me a clean bill of health. I felt pretty good. But it did open my eyes to the fact that even today there is evil in this world that seeks to do us harm. Spiritual forces of wickedness are real. But even if they're real, what's this thing with the names? Manu's family was so afraid of the evil spirits, they wouldn't even tell him his name. So what's so important about someone knowing your name? Is that just a Polynesian superstition? Well, it, yes, in some ways I, it is. I, I don't think you have to worry about putting on a name tag for fear that some evil spirit is going to read it. But in some ways, no. In some ways, names are important. And who knows your name is a matter of life and death. In fact, the Bible takes names very seriously. Just as seriously as in Bora Bora. You ever notice how many times someone in the Bible is given a specific name because of a meaning that that name has? The first example is Genesis 10, verse 25. Eber had two sons. The first was named Peleg, which means division, for in his lifetime the people of the world were divided. Kind of sounds like our name today. We could all be Peleg. In Genesis 16, an angel tells a distraught Hagar, you are now pregnant and will give birth to a son. And you are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord has heard your cry of distress. Then in Genesis 35, a dying Rachel with her last breath gives her baby a terrible name, Ben-Oni which means son of my sorrow. Son who has caused me such sorrow. How would you like to bear the burden of that name in all your life? You are your mom's sorrow. Well, fortunately, uh, his father had a, a better name for him. And he named him Benjamin, which means son of my right hand, my right hand man. That's a little better name, isn't it? Whoever chose your name, did they tell you why? Did they tell you a meaning behind your name? Or if, or if you chose a name for a child, did you look up what that name meant before you gave it to them? Names have meanings, and, and names are important in the Bible. So important that in Genesis 32, when Jacob wrestles all night with a messenger from God, he gets a new name. 
When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. The messenger here needs to know Jacob's name. The messenger needs to know Jacob's name because both blessings and curses need names. You don't just say, hey you, be blessed. You say their name. God bless Angela. God bless Nathan. Every time I pray for my family, I pray for them by name. God bless Tammy. God bless Luke, etc. Well, it's the same way. And so that messenger from God, the one who represents God, asked Jacob his name. Now, Jacob's name means grab the heel in Hebrew. Um, Again, kind of an odd name. He he gets that name because he was a twin and he came out second grabbing onto the heel of his older brother. And so the name also has a meaning of of usurper or deceiver, um, a second place somebody trying to be in first place. So it's really not the greatest name. Sorry if you happen to be named Jacob. <laughs> just, just consider yourself named after a biblical hero. But the messenger here doesn't bless Jacob by that name. He gives him a new name, and that name is Israel which means one who struggles or wrestles with God. And by that name, he is blessed. Then Jacob asked the name of God's messenger. Essentially, he asked the name of God, but he wouldn't tell him. He just blessed him and left. And it's not until Exodus 3 that God answers the question about God's name. Remember the story of God speaking to Moses from the the burning bush and um, he calls out to Moses by name, says he's known by name. And God tells Moses to return to Egypt and lead the people out of slavery into freedom. Exodus 3.11, but Moses protested to God, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I'll be with you. And this is your sign that I am the one who sent you. When you've brought the people out of Egypt, you'll worship God at this very mountain. But Moses protested, If I go to the people of Israel and tell them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, What is his name? Then what should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. Now, that word that that translation described as Yahweh is in Hebrew, Y-H-W-H. And In ancient Hebrew, there were no vowels. So you just had those continents, Y-H-W-H. And that has led to different translations through the year. Jehovah, you might have heard that. That's an attempt to try to to figure out how to pronounce this name. And also, uh, probably most closely to the original would be Yahweh. But the Jews were so respectful of the name of God that they wouldn't even speak it. God gave them the name and they would 
read the name, but when they saw YHWH, what they would read out loud would be the Lord. They would say the Lord rather than Yahweh. In fact, if some of your translations of the Bible, if you look, you'll see that the Lord is in all caps, but it's a little letter. That, that means that that's standing for YHWH, that's standing for Yahweh. Uh, and that's how much they respected the name of God. Even today, names matter in the Bible. And they matter to us too. Not because we're afraid of who knows our name. Yes, there is spiritual evil, but we remember from Ephesians 6 that put on the, all the armor of God so you'd be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. We don't have to be afraid on Halloween or, or any other day of being harmed by spiritual forces of wickedness because God has given us everything we need to protect us. In Ephesians 6.13, it says, Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you'll still be standing firm. Still be standing firm. So it doesn't matter if the South Sea spirits or any other spirits know your name. Today, the biggest danger is not in someone knowing your name. We're much more likely to be harmed because someone doesn't know our name. In Pastor Julie's message last week, she read a, a book about Maya who was intentionally ignored by her classmates. And it reminded me of a movie that I watched 50 years ago in school. It was called Cypher in the Snow. Any, anybody know that? <laughs> okay. A few teachers might. Cypher in the Snow. It's about a boy, probably a few years older than Manu, who was unintentionally ignored. The movie begins with the kids getting on the school bus. It's a cold winter's day. And he walks by all the loud and rowdy kids uh, and finds an open seat in the middle of the bus. But then he gets up and he tells the bus driver that he needs to get off. And as he steps off the bus, he falls over into the snow and dies. And the bus empties out, the, the emergency people are called, and as they gather around his lifeless body, you can hear the other students talking. I don't even know who he is, says one of them. Never seen him before, said another. Even though this kid has ridden this bus all year and has been a part of the same school system his entire life. Nobody noticed. There is uh, a need to inform his parents. The principal pulls the boy's file, and that's what he's called, the boy. It's always the boy, not his name. And the file says that Mr. Connor was the boy's favorite teacher, so the principal can't even remember who this kid is, and he asked Mr. Connor if he would inform the parents. Well, Mr. Connor is shocked because he can barely remember the kid. He can remember talking to him a couple of times in his class the year before. Well, at least you remember talking with him, said the principal. That's more than everyone else. The boy was a cipher, a zero. Nobody knew his name. And the film implies that being invisible somehow took a toll on this young man and proved fatal. Now, I don't know if, if walking through life as a cipher is, in fact, physically deadly. It was based on a true story, at least uh, that's what they say. But I do know it matters that someone knows your name. And here's the good news. Somebody does. God promises us in Isaiah 45, I will give you treasures hidden in the dark and secret places. Then you will know that I, the Lord God of Israel, have called you by name. I, the Lord God of Israel, have called you 
by name. Somebody knows your name. And that somebody is the Lord, God of Israel. And when God knows you by name, you never walk alone. Even if the whole world ignores you, you're not a zero. When God knows you by name, you don't have to fear any spirit, whether it's a, one in Bora Bora or one here on Halloween night. When God knows you by name, you can live confident in the armor of God and no weapon formed against you will prosper, as the scriptures say. When God knows your name, you can be blessed and not cursed, lifted up and not crushed down. When God knows you by name. Man whose parents were afraid that for anyone to know his, the real name of their son. But aren't you glad that the Lord knows your name? And aren't you glad that you know the Lord? For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, as it says in Romans 10. Evil is real. Evil spirits are real. But God is real too, and infinitely greater than all evil. And God knows you by name. He calls you by name. So be glad and don't be afraid. Let's pray. Oh God, the great I am, YHWH, Yahweh, Jehovah, you know us by name, each one of us. And we are so grateful. We are so grateful that, that in your eyes we are treasured. That you don't speak to us with a hey you or what's your name. Because you already know it. You already love us and you already call us to you. So Lord, help us to trust in you. To put on all the armor that you give us and then to walk completely unafraid. Knowing that no evil can snatch us from your hands. For you, Lord, have the name above all names. And you love us beyond all measure. So thank you. Thank you for calling us by name and always being there. From now till we walk into that heavenly home you've prepared for us, we celebrate the joy of being with you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.